Shall I, um, shall I do the way? It is what it is. Yeah, go for it. We recording you? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> we've never, we've never done that since yeah. <laughs> the potential for cock ups is yeah. huge. Yeah. Right guys, welcome to episode 19 and the penultimate, epi- penultimate episode of series 1 of the Lure Fishing Podcast. And today you find us from some random bloke's kitchen in Brighton. Uh, here with Mr Fishy Rob, Robin Howard of Biff One, Brighton Inshore Fishing One fame. Lure Fishing Charter Boat and All Things Fishy. So, <laughs> well, I'm not, not much sure all things. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Right, yeah. <laughs> so... What we're going to do today, we're going to delve deep into Robin's past and we're going to talk about guiding and guiding fishing specifically. Um, as we all know, it can be a little bit of a polarising t- subject. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people uh, see the benefits, some people don't. So we're going to lead away and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of start off by introducing how myself and Robin met because it's quite poignant in, in respect to guiding. Uh, and the reason for that is because I met Robin as a client. I met Robin as a customer. Um, we'd spoken online. Fishing. Yeah, fishing I was going to say, that sounded yeah. so dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, where is Charlie going? Well, it, yeah, it it's just have, the fishing business. It could have gone either way, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we'd spoken online in the virtual world and we'd known each other sort of through mutual... World sea fishing, wasn't it? World sea fishing, mm. yes. Yeah, so it was an old forum. I don't even know if it still yeah, survives, yeah. does it? Mm-hmm. Um, in its day, it was bouncing it was a great place to be it was friendly really, place yeah very friendly place met a lot of people that I still call friends today uh, including Rob um, and that's where we sort of made our first acquaintance and I think the first do you know what this is not started I'll start with the first guiding job that you took me on but let's start a little bit more about your background in guiding where did it start how did it how did it become a thing for you um, I suppose it's Lee Ponting really he was at my school, and the only way I could get him to come fishing with me is if I promised to set him up. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. And do yeah. His, but he's still a friend today. Yeah. Uh, and when we go fishing, guess what? He still wants to set him up. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it was uh, kind of a bit instinctive like that. Yeah. Always just happy to see people catch. Yeah. Never, never particularly bothered if I call. No. Um, but it's not, it's not what you, you've done your whole life, is it? You've had a myriad of Oh, God, no. Yeah. Careers, um, yeah. Actually, to early days, I was in the tackle trade, yeah. um, penjangling group. Yeah. Uh, worked there. Yeah, cut through that. Then I had a girlfriend, and she complained that we weren't going to make enough money right. for like house and life and stuff. Yeah. And she was right. All the really boring things. Yeah, the tackle yeah. shop doesn't yeah. really, no. unless you own it. No. Um, so I went into computers, and from there. Bought this house, mm-hmm. uh, moved to Brighton from Essex, mainly because of fishing in Essex at that time. It was still okay, but it was hard, really yeah. hard, really, compared to how it had been. Starting to see the end of it then. It's mm-hmm. changed so much now. Yeah, oh exactly. my God. yeah we'll get onto that thing at some point. Yeah. Um, and that led me to not wanting to leave Brighton to go to London every day, basically. Yeah. Um, and I was fishing every spare minute anyway. And then I went to Namibia in 2004, mm-hmm. and I saw a proper guided operation for the first time, what I felt was a proper guided operation, because you get people that just sort of take people fishing, but yep. then you get those that really do all the background work to make sure the client gets the best opportunity, yep. and that's that's guiding in my book. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I saw it, uh, Terence Clark out in Namibia, back then working for Mola Mola, uh-huh. And even down to pack lunches, yeah. and, uh, but yeah. the knowledge that guy had, and he'd hang with us after as well. He'd, he'd make us feel comfortable in his his country, if you like. Mm-hmm. And that whole ethos was really rubbed off of me. And I just sat back, and the whole thing provide the vehicle, provide the rods, provide the bait, you know, do the runs along the coast back mm-hmm. then. Because the fishing is good, but yeah. it's not always good. And sometimes yeah. I had to move, run around. Yeah, of course, this is pre pre being afloat. This is all shore based. Oh yeah, this is all yeah. shore based. Two thousand and five, I left. Finally made the decision. Left the city. First year, I probably had ten clients. Yeah. Um, first year to get clients, uh, it was ten pounds for up to four anglers per hour. Wow. 
um, which is an absolute loss leader. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it worked, and, yeah, and yeah. the blogging, the blogging, the diary. Yeah, the back yeah. Then, I mean, any, anyone who's, who knows you or knows of you knows you probably through that. That's probably mm. where most people's first um, incarnation, officially Rob, as you were, as were and still are known. I, it sort of came from. I see so much when I'm out and about, not just the fish itself, it, it's, and that's what I try to bring across in the blog, mm-hmm. is uh, just everything and how it all links together. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, nature's quite amazing still, what's left of it? Yeah, exactly. And it, is, it is sort of disappearing slowly, so mm-hmm. it's worth documenting while it's still there. Um, but so today, you know, we're going to jump around a little bit, so today I've dragged Andy Again. down <laughs> uh, to get out with yourself on a float and go for bass. We've both absolutely melted all day, but we've caught some fish. Um, in what's probably quite tough conditions and things like that. I mean, that was you know, it's quite, you're quite new to the experience of being with a guide and on a, on a charter boat. So I'm used to the sea fishing with charter skippers, etc., etc. But it's quite a new thing for you. Is there anything? Do you, does it strike you as an unusual thing or no? So the lure fishing, like lure fishing on the sea, is lovely. Yeah, because uh, you feel everything. Yeah. So that was what's got me in tuned in it uh-huh. <coughs> within it. And um, what if I, if I don't take this personally. Right? No, I've got something. I've got something. You, you know, yeah, the okay, first, don't worry. Yeah. Well, the first time we went out, when Charlie yeah. first mentioned it to me, I thought, oh, we've only just gone out of the harbour. But within half an hour, I was loving it. Yeah. Because yeah. in my head, you think you're going to go miles out into yeah. the sea. Yeah. But actually, you realise there's so much happening around the coastline. Oh, yeah. But just a bit further out than you could cast. Which is, yeah. Sure. And it struck home that I don't maximise locally from the sea I haven't done all my life mm-hmm. what's available hence our conversation mm-hmm. earlier mm-hmm. Um, so it was an eye opener and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and, it's, and the prices that Robin charges I'm not saying it because he's here it makes it very affordable yeah. because you think of fuel costs and everything yeah. and we've been bombing up and down the coastline here mm-hmm. and it's just a really good fun morning yeah. we've had two yeah. sessions haven't we got back to back and we've had some nice bass and they, they fight on light tackle Ugh. It's different kind. Uh, yeah, and yeah. It, it's really opened my mind into. Um, I'm not going to go down the LRF. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, <laughs> yeah, no. No, that's very likely. No, if I if I do that, then that's it. That's going. <laughs> yeah. No, but actually using what I would call light. I think I mentioned this before. Light pike tackle, heavy yeah. perch tackle yeah. Yeah. for these fish, and you, you you catch them out. Of course, they still give you good scrap as well. Yeah. It's an eye So it's yeah. it's com- all the stuff I've done before has been like musky fishing, or I, I have done when I was younger, like wreck fishing mm-hmm. with a really heavy rod yeah. hey, rod is horrible yeah. and you're just winching up fish from the depths and their swim bladders are poking out their mouths yeah. Yeah. it's not the way to go so what robin's doing here and i'm not saying it because he's here but it's just <laughs> it's the thing that i would enjoy doing yeah yeah it appeals to so many as well yeah, like it does. um the whole ethos is uh, of the light line is to make the most of what's left i keep banging on about it and i don't mean to be depressive um but there really isn't so you know you just mentioned about the wrecks bringing up the fish you can go out there now and really not bring up the fish that mm, really, them yeah, out. Yeah. so you're just out there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You see what well, I mean? so, for, so for me for my background of, of sea angling before i sort of met rob was um up in the thames mm. quite heavy gear really for what he was catching um you know eight nine ten ounce leads um big hooks heavy line not really any interest to it or you was Gillian, it was cold in the towers with a big lead and a long leader and a, and a red gill lure at the end. Again, not a lot of fun. You're, f- you're still fishing with heavy gear. You lose 99% of what you cast out. Um, and it's, yeah, it's been a revelation for, for me. And I'm sure it would be for a lot of other people if they sort of take a little step back from the, the sea fishing they do and realise it hasn't all got to be that way. There's other... Obviously, yeah. there's times where you do need to go heavy, um, where it's called for, but... The, f- the first time I ever cast a, a single projectile, if you like, yeah. on bass... You mentioned that it was in the towers, yeah, and it was called a trace ace bass bandit, right? And it was basically one of the very first jig heads, and it was rough cut like that, yeah, and it had a, a, a regular wheel, yeah, yeah, cut and pushed on, and that yeah. was it, yeah. And the fish, I hooked, I hooked a huge fish on that, and another, it went off so far, another boat going up the drift, cut, cut yeah, cut it off. yeah. Well, it, that, yeah, the, the, the towers, I mean, if anyone's, I'm not sure it's, it's happening that, again, it's it is happening again, but it's not, it's still not there. No, you, you, the no, days it's where to go, yeah. you saw fighters of people literally mm. being knee deep with fish with bass on, mm. on the deck, you'd fill up a deck with bass to you know a foot high, and that's the problem they did. 
This is it. You know? <laughs> and now they can't. And now they can't. And, and I think the, the, the more importantly that, a lot of them realise they shouldn't. Yeah. I think it's, that's the most important thing. It's not the can't, it's that they, the mentality is changing. Very much, yeah. very much since, uh, yeah, the way you're throwing that back. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely gone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's more like you get, why are you keeping that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which can be its own issue sometimes as well. Huge issue. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if we've really got time to go into that today. Oh, but we had a brief and morality yeah, of fishing. We, Let's go. <laughs> yeah, we had a brief conversation about how that could backfire for anglers in the future, but we, we, we'll sort of pray and hope it doesn't get there. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, so so I'm, what I'm going to try and do is sort of offer the uh, counter argument to why why because there will be some people watching this who don't really see the point in guiding, and that's the reality. But you get you see it all the time with people online. Why would you pay to get taught to fish? I didn't know it did. I've been fishing since I was four years old. For some people, though, the fun is le- the learning curve. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. But they're still missing out because with little accelerations, those big gaps of not catching Absolutely. might not have to happen. Yeah, and I think the, the my argument to that is always you could be the best angler in the world, however you categorise that, you which is impossible. The, the rod hours, yeah. But you look at top sportsmen. Yeah. Look at top tennis players, top footballers. Top, they've all got coaches. They've all got people telling them how they can improve and, and, and just analysing and going, that little 1%, if you treat it that. And more importantly, they're always doing it. Exactly, yeah. And for the guy working in the office, he, couldn't, he can't do both. He has to choose. And That's it. Your time on the water, for us as clients, is invaluable because you're in touch. That's what you're paying for. That's exactly what you're paying for. What should be happening yeah. when and where. Um, um, if on the, it doesn't happen these days so much, but in the early days, if I was empty, mm-hmm. I, I'd still go out. Mm-hmm. I'd still sail, go through yeah. the motions, yeah. build the product. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, like, obviously... We've spoken about your sort of history in guiding and um, more sort of g- generally, but let's talk about lure fishing specifically. Um, I know you mentioned the first time you sort of I, like the single projectile was in the towers. But I just want, before we leave yeah, yeah, yeah. The, gu- the guiding, the guys that are doing it now are taking it to a whole new level. Of course. Yeah. I, I used to showcase what's available locally, Yeah. but people like um, Ross uh, John- Johnson yeah. and uh, Gareth uh-huh. Griffiths, they're taking guys on that safari principle. Yeah. Loading them in a wagon, taking them yeah. miles and miles, yeah. and giving them experiences that are just incredible. Yeah, Gi- well, which, which is what the, I, I sort of hop back a little bit to our, our first experience, me as a client. My very first experience as a client for Rob, we had a 24 hour guided day. We oh, went fishing. Crazy, we went fishing for 24 hours, and yeah. I'm not talking like oh, carp fishing <laughs> when you go to sleep and wait for bites. We were active for 24 yeah. hours. The only time we slept, I couldn't it was do it now. mullet fishing on the river. <laughs> and we, there was me, Rob, and a friend of mine who would come along. We all just fell asleep. <laughs> we all just fell asleep, <laughs> laying on the sunny r- riverbank, fishing for mullet, and that was it. That was the only rest of the twenty-four Thank hours. God, the bread come off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, you lost two or three rods. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not think guiding is a very broad term? Yeah, because it's um, got lots of different yeah. um, interpretations. We had this conversation on the boat earlier, uh-huh. and because um, Charlie asked me, what, I said, "Well, fishing with Robin's not like being guided." Yeah, because. It's only the second time we've been out, but obviously you didn't know me the first time. But this time, it's just like three friends in the boat. Yeah. Part of the job is to evaluate your clients and know how to approach them. And this comes from all the corporate arse licking through the years that I had to do in IT. Mm-hmm. And you're a very skillful lure angler. I'm very aware of your background and your results. <laughs> and <laughs> so I'm very hands off with you. But, but no, it's, if, it's relaxing though, isn't it, in the boat? I, I just make sure you, you, you're you put, doing it. You for, put us on the right trips. Yeah, yeah. And, and that you've you've listened. Yeah. And and you were doing everything right, and that's why you caught so well. Yeah. Yeah. well yeah. yeah. But it's like it, for me, I've been guiding. Like when I go musky fishing, mm. so when I went when I went musky fishing, the first time I went, it was with a guy I didn't know. But we struck up a friendship, and I was with him for seven days. So mm-hmm. After seven days, you have a you, you get on or you don't. Yeah. So the next time I went, it was two mates because I spent mm-hmm. nine days and I was staying in people's houses who I didn't know. Yeah. So obviously, um, the enjoyment factor went through the roof, and it was completely different. I was just in, involved with what was going on yeah, with yeah. friends, and the third time I was involved with a fam- <laughs> I said at family's house. Yeah. And I was part of that as well. Lovely. Yeah. And it was. It was brilliant. So. When I eventually go back, it would just it would just be it would just be picking that up. But um, I what you watch things on TV, and I watch what's going on with uh, with guiding services, and it's Charlie was talking about it. it I lose track that a lot of people just fish now and then, mm-hmm. so they they do need 
a uh, hands-on approach, like mm. you just said, Robin, mm. you try you evaluate people. People can't tie basic knots. They don't mm. know how to unhook fish. So, well, when I had that big m- big muskie in America, I started to unhook it. Matt went mental, the guide, mm. because he didn't know... You had your sort of yeah. Right. But yeah. also, yeah. It, insurance. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. They have to unhook everything. Yeah. yeah. Once I caught a couple, and he could see what I was... He, he was he was very relaxed, yeah. but yeah, but I, I didn't even recognise that fact, you see. Yeah, yeah. And in his boat, he has uh, Americans who ha- have never picked up a rod before. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm. and I lose track of that. So you'd have the same. You'd have mm. people who are never picked up. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Um, when I work, do stuff with Alex at his tackle shop, because that's match angling, there's a big onus now on coaching. And that's what I was thinking mm-hmm. of when Charlie was talking about the guiding, because yeah. a good guide's also a coach. Yeah. You're in a sudden, you're probably, I, I will disagree. I'm not a coach. Yeah. I'll, I, 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 so I think there's a very definite, it can be. No, that's what, can you be. get the overlap. Yeah, there's an overlap sometimes. Yeah. So I have learned from Rob and taken those skills and used them elsewhere, but I don't go there for the reason of him improving my technique. So no, I but what, because Robin wants what us can. to catch, he's yeah. also doing a little bit of coaching. Yeah. With, to, to with, catch those fish on yeah, my yeah, catch. Yeah. 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 With yeah. weaker anglers, you'd have to do more coaching. Yeah. So, yeah. Because otherwise, your business doesn't succeed because uh, people aren't catching. So, I think this term guide is quite a broad one. It's because, because, church. But looking at. A tutor. Yeah. Yes. But looking at the match angling scene, yeah. there are angl- top class anglers are called coaches, yeah. which is interesting. So, they'll sit next to or with. Uh, an angler that wants to learn on a commercial yeah so uh, Mark Pollard we have him on the other podcast quite a lot he's mm-hmm. he's really good angler he's fantastic yeah, they're, they're and, and he regularly has two or three clients with him and mm-hmm. they'll all fish together and he'll set up as well they'll use his stuff and he'll go and, and it, it really is hands on yeah. and because of that sitting down at a peg yeah. situation you, it is it, it's like being in a classroom yeah, yeah, yeah. and it is, you think wow that's that's really coaching I think you're, what you do, Robin, is fantastic, but I think subtly, without perhaps you realising it, you, you're, you're coaching a little bit mm. and guiding, mm. and that, there's that overlap because it has to be all encompassing. Because Charlie was talking about people that he's been out with before, skippers that were a bit very abrupt. Yeah. They're not coaching. There's a few of them. <laughs> a few of them. They're not yeah. coaching. No. All they're doing is going, oh, I've got, the service. I've got yeah. somebody on yeah. my boat. If I was taking them out on my, that type of attitude. Yeah. So they fall within the guiding term, but just. Well, I think they fall in the skipper in turn. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. They, they're yeah. just providing the means of getting you to where the yeah. fish are. They're not really helping you once you get there. Some again, do. again, some yeah. do. There is some crossover. Yeah. I, I sort of see it. So, I, having done a little bit of coaching myself and a little bit of guiding in ways, I very quickly learned it wasn't for me. Um, I, I sort of separate two ways. So, the coaching, I expect to show everyone from start to finish how the process works. So, this is the rod, this is why we're using it. This is the reel, this is why we're using it. These are the knots you need to use, etc. etc. It's a lot more slower pace whereas a guiding I was like there's a rod that works use it and this is how we're going to use it and this is how you're going to catch fish for me and it's something I'll touch on with Rob um, because I mean right now I don't fish at all because I'm so busy but I used to fish a lot a hell of a lot and what I found with the guiding is I burnt my own spots so when I wanted to go fishing they was burnt by people that I'd taken there before uh, that and for me being where I am in the world I've not got an abundance of spots and I had to sort of go well I can't that's do it the anymore. biggest problem in Essex yeah. that yeah here it doesn't matter no. No, yeah. just go to the somewhere Next else yeah. Where yeah. Yeah. Fish and at, where I was doing predominantly fresh water as well yeah. so it was a totally different thing like you know I wasn't I haven't got the, A you haven't got the expanse of coastline that you've got here and B our rivers are, are very very spotty to say the, to say the least um, I, I found it just didn't suit my lifestyle and my fishing you know I, I, I'm busting to get back to one of those rivers with yeah. the skills I've picked up since I lived down here I must yeah. admit I still haven't done it with Lewis no I mean yeah. we've spoken about it plenty yeah. of times and it's one of those, it's one of those things of when do you get really the time really busting right? to it <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there's a few things I know now that would well, well this is it and like I said earlier there's the things that you it's really windy yeah yeah it is blowing about a force okay. nine before, I think. <laughs> before, we, before we move on yeah so the coaching on these commercials yeah. works yeah because it doesn't matter about burning the spots mm-hmm. in fact people want to know about peg seven on raven lake or mm. peg 13 on jay lake because these match when that in tunes yeah they want to know the, do you and, know what I mean? and these fish will just not yeah. change their behavior just they'll get pushed around i would think well i don't this, this is so weird because you'd think you'd think wouldn't you it would burn out. And yeah. This, but these fish just seem to get onto different 
baits and different yeah. methods throughout the summer. Yeah, yeah. And well, they fish it all year round. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was filming a guy last week, it, the, Alex can't get the guys enough casters. Yeah. They're on the shallow caster method at the minute, and it's been like it since um, probably the last month and a half. Mm-hmm. But I, I did notice last year after they spawned, they wanted protein like paste and meat baits. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they move on to like maggots and casters. Yeah, yeah. And so, so it changes as they go through. Well, yeah. So it's, it's quite interesting. It's, I'm not into it, but it's quite interesting. As listen, an outsider, to, yeah. to just analyse it, yeah. But going back to the point I was going to make, so the coaching works really well, because it uh-huh. doesn't matter, does yeah. it? But yeah. the, I think what you're doing works really well, because it's at the sea. And you've still got to be a bit careful, but obviously you're not going to have that, 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 that problem with taking somebody out, and then next week they're going to be on the spot, because uh-huh. they've got to get a boat, da, 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 yeah. But if you take someone down a local river, mm-hmm. they've only got to better walk to it, yeah. and then it's destroyed forever, isn't it? What's that? Uh, Headphones just popped. <laughs> Probably too casual. So I think guiding on rivers and lakes in this country is really difficult, and also you, you can destroy it for, other angles. Exactly. That's, yeah. the, that's the danger. That's what I didn't like. Yeah. I still, uh, I still shore guide um, on windy days, funnily enough. Uh, but I must admit, everyone's so busy with their lives that, you know, um, on the whole, I don't think I've, I've made people more aware of spots. So on yeah. a weekend, all right, yeah, on a weekend, maybe there'll be a few more on it. Yeah. But great, they're all catching. Yeah. yeah. They learn how to fish it. Yeah. It's yeah. Like win-win. <laughs> but you see, if you do that down a fend rain. Yeah. It would be destroyed within days yeah. because yeah. there's only perhaps one or two pike to be caught. Yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah. that's the difference, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I think you've got to be very selective about where you do and don't. And um, well, it depends what you want from it. If you, you know, if you want that, if you do the fishing and you don't want to ruin it yourself, then don't. <laughs> yeah. You know, and if it's not going to ruin anyone else's fishing, you've got to be a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think you have to be careful. sympathetic. You're very sympathetic to other people. Yeah. 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 Well, it was like anything in fishing, you can. Well, it'll come back and bite you on the bomb if you're not. Exactly. Otherwise. Yeah. It's yeah. a small, very small community. And it, yeah, exactly. If you ruin it for others as well, you mm-hmm. ruin it for yourself in the end, mm-hmm. don't you? But at the same time, by making those people aware, we had an issue with uh, access to blue mussels in the local river. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ithaca were happy to let us carry on once they realised how many people were actually, uh, you know, carefully harvesting these yeah. blue mussels. Uh, they were about to ban it. They listened to the anglers getting together, yeah. and they agreed. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, that's what, and that's what you need. I mean, it, it's the ongoing story. If, if everyone was secretive on that river, yeah. they wouldn't have got together. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to get them. Yeah, but that's 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 a lot of thing. There was a lot of mussels available. Uh, not so many. That's why they wanted to. This is but this, yeah. So you you couldn't do it with the pike fishing. No, well, no. It's a bit different. No, no, again, you could, no, and it's, it's, a, yeah. it's a time. It's a time things take to replenish as well. It's like we need to recharge, and not to get a twenty pound pipe to recharge, and another twenty pound pipe to replace it takes a certain. Amount yeah, it's only got to take one person to Bad. catch it badly yeah. or kill it. Exactly. Yeah. End yeah. of yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like obviously, so the lure fishing now is really your thing. It's what you push is the light lure fishing. But you have done it all. Um, you know, we've done it with you. We come out on a species day where we sort of target a little bit of everything, and. I think for a lot of people, they don't really realise what you can catch on lures, what's oh, possible. I'm just composing a list at the moment of what we've caught on lures, on, and it's incredible. Yeah. The what's, your most, yeah, what's your most unusual you've had? <sighs> Actually, a conger eel was yeah. pretty unusual on a lure, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. On a, like a shad? Or? It was just on a regular, most of them are on regular shads, yeah. because when there's so much bait that looks exactly like that shad, yeah. it brings the weird stuff in. Yeah. I mean, we've I've stopped, or well, not stopped, I've We've all agreed not to cast at some fish out there when the bait's right. on, even though they're jellyfish eaters. Yeah. Apparently, I don't. Yeah. Um, but uh, weirdest thing, so that great big red mullet was a bit special. Yeah, Two yeah. pound, one ounce red mullet on a lure. Yeah. Uh, the barbels on it were like thick like that at the top. It was Amazing. very strange. I was always yeah. scared of it. <laughs> uh, big undulate rays are quite not infrequent. Yeah. The real eye opener this year. Uh, was we can actually target thornback rays on isomes. Which is insane. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, smooth hounds. Yeah. Um, Have you done taupe? Not yet. That's got no. off, isn't it? And we are on ground where they run. Yeah. I'm surprised. But sometimes we've had, about four times, we've had a lure come back chomped yeah. right next to the hook yeah. in one go. Yeah. One bang. Yeah. Which is quite impressive. Thick rubber on my lures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, on my two minutes. See, see, that's the other thing. So, what I like about fishing with Robin is it's the, the gear he uses is, is absolutely fit for purpose. A lot of people might come and go, oh, I haven't got my box of lures with 30 different shads and different colours and different sizes. 
but the benefit we've got is Rob's out there every day. He knows it works. There's no need to piss around with all of that. Mm. I, I think when you're fishing for fish that have been caught before, it, it, it's very different yeah. to fishing for fish that are effectively virgin. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, and I think for bass, it's as simple as if it, if it looks and swims like a fish, it's going to work. Yeah. As simple yeah. as that. Yeah. Um, I don't get hung up on colours so much. No. Maybe if it's cloudy, I'll go with whites. Just yeah. But even like the rods and the reels, like they, they're, they're functional. You've used, they've been put yeah. through the test yeah. and they, like, they've gone through the ringer. The, one, the boat rods I've got at the moment are incredible. The, old, yeah. the other eye pings off where they get banged about too much. Yeah. And, but um, yeah, incredible value. Yeah. Um, that is, was the thing, that, one of the things that struck me first time out. Yeah. Because I don't like using other people's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Yeah. So, but I'm thinking, I'm going on the sea, so yeah, it's quite cool to use uh, the guy's stuff because of the song. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to mess your own gear up. But then I thought, oh, the gear's <laughs> going to be crap. And it wasn't. Mm. In fact, the rod, the rods are, it, it makes you, you, you think, these rods are a bit longer than, I know, you need them that, you, get the, you need them that length to get the distance to the cast. Yeah. Yep. And actually, you're quite high off the water on the boat, so uh-huh. actually, what, they eight foot? Nine, nine, nine foot, yeah. yeah. So I probably use seven half, eight foot rods because of the rails. We have to yeah. have these rails by law yeah. for yeah. a certain height, and it's to keep it clear. Yeah. And also the distance. Yes, the more water you cover, the more fish exactly, you yeah. And the reels that uh, those pen reels are fantastic. Uh, work horses, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Spin yeah. So actually, so when I've the odd time as a kid and I was a, like my twenties when I'd be on holiday and go yeah. out on a deep sea wreck, the yeah. gear would be awful. Yeah, very basic. But um, yeah. it, using Robin's gear, it's like. Actually, it works. This is really cool because yeah. it's the right gear yeah. and it's weighted correctly for what you're trying to do. The, the rods are sold out in the country, and I'm really not surprised because they're such good value. Uh, I think eighty quid. Yeah, Akuma. What are they? Akuma. Give me a second. I'm not very good with that sort of thing, but Helios SX. There you go. Yeah. Twenty sixties. Um, yeah, I think it, it just makes sense. Like, yeah. like, how nice is it to go, to go fishing and know you haven't got to take anything? You just get in your car, go, and know that you've got it covered. I'm a bit disappointed we haven't lost a lure in two trips. Though. I know. Yeah. That's because you're very good lure. <laughs> uh, this is the big difference. I did cut well, Robin off today. Though. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh, somehow. Yeah, weird. I don't really know how that it works. It was weird. The wind was weird. Everything yeah. was weird. I, I won't be sailing, by the way. It's blown. How was it? Yeah. Um, so, uh, it's because you're seeing the second it touches down. Hmm. Yeah. And if you don't see the second it touches down, you lose a lot. If it, if it comes down like that and you're moving it, everything's good. If it comes down like that and does that, you're... Yeah. <laughs> That's right, we've got a blink machine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. So, but yeah, so we haven't, we haven't even lost a middle huh? No, yeah. well, next time. Yeah. Um, well, squid next. Yeah, yeah squid next. So we did, we did a little bit of squid, mm. and I took, it took me some, initially some convincing to Andy that it was actually even a thing. Because <laughs> uh, that's the other thing. Did you eat any of those? I haven't yet. Oh, wow. I'm, yeah. I'm trying, because I'm, I'm going to stuff one of them. So. But you got me in the freezer as soon as you got Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they've all been they're sorted out. So I'm going to. That reminds me, I'm going to stuff, Charlie's got a recipe for mm. stuff squid. Like chorizo and yeah. rice nice. and peppers. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to, I want to make, I want to make sure I've got a nice batter, because mm. I do like um, calamari. Mm, yeah, 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 so I'm going to, I, if I said tempuri, yeah, tempuri my, yeah. that would make me sound like I'm a good cook and I'm, I'm all right. I'm very, very average. It means so. you've got access to YouTube. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just Everyone's going, a good I'm cook. going to do a light batter on yeah. it. Yeah. 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 But yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's coming. Yeah. Um, we're going to touch very lightly on so where your guide has taken you. It has taken you all over the world. Ah, uh, very strangely, yes. Yeah, you've been where? So yeah. you've been Russia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Canary yeah. Oh, Islands. Russia is amazing. It's just such a shame, isn't it? That it's that sort of gone there for a while, isn't it? Ah, uh, this is just the politicians. The yeah. people are still amazing. Of course, uh, yeah. everyone needs to remember. Even the stupid ones that are listening to the party yeah. lines. It's only because that's all they know. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Russians are lovely people. Yeah. Um, I've got to say that I've got so many friends. That no, are yeah, <laughs> but they are lovely yeah, people, yeah. Uh, especially rural Russians. They yeah. give you everything. Yeah. Um, Australia, that was yeah. a really good kick. Yeah. Uh, Broome was amazing, thanks to contacts there. Mm-hmm. Um, Charles Tipping, yeah, Charles. Um, where else have I been? Fuerta. Fuerta. Yeah, Mary's we had there. a good crack in yeah, Fuerta. Yeah, we've got some history there. That was a nice mix of fishing and party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Getting the balance right. Now, yeah. I've, now I've got older, I go to Portugal. <laughs> uh, now I'm working more out the Guadiana with clients. Yeah. Uh, but always using local services, local yeah. guides. Yeah. Not never stepping on toes, but just knowing, having the contacts, making it easy for people to yeah. access it, and always at a budget. You know, yeah. remember what you paid them for. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Virtually nothing. Same with the boat, as cheap as possible, because then you get more customers. Yeah. Always busy. Yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. And I say so again, it opened my eyes to all these different types of fishing you can do. And, and like I say, on a budget, you haven't got to spend thousands and thousands of pounds to go abroad and catch all these hard fighting fish on. It's a big, it's getting heavy harder. Gear. It is. Getting Charlie's harder. getting further and further under your cover. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching. Jerry, I'm falling asleep. Yeah. Falling asleep. <laughs> I've been look. watching the monitor. Look, he's going. <laughs> What is, is I, I know what it is. It's you didn't have your hat today. It's it's very when we first set up, it was weird because I was not half in shot. So we moved the camera. Now I'm yeah. looking at this, and you're just sinking. Uh, yeah, I was just going to end up leaning on the wall like this. Yeah, yeah. It, it is incredibly hot today. I have suffered out on the boat. I forgot my hat. So I've been not much hair up there. Anymore, there is a so. story about a mobile phone as well. Uh, it's been one of those days. <laughs> he still he still owes us lunch. Yeah, I do still owe lunch. Yeah, I had one. So we on the way. Great, right, I'm going to Riddle and Finch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can my yeah. French friend come? I love it too. <laughs> um, yeah, stuck in traffic on the way here due to animals on the road that were non-existent. Lost my phone within about 15 minutes of being in Brighton Marina. And uh, we're, we're already out fishing. Yeah, gave myself. Charlie realised lost his phone, so we <laughs> had to come back in and. Uh, but we did catch twenty bass. We did catch twenty bass yes. and some nice fish. Yeah, I really enjoyed myself. No uh, bycatch. Oh, mackerel, big mackerel. Oh, and, uh, and uh, 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 carfish. Carfish. Oh yeah, carfish a piece. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have one. <laughs> I didn't have any carfish. Be happy. I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah. um, Still got three times <laughs> I watched my carfish. Yeah. <laughs> I caught a garfish and refused to unhook it. <laughs> yeah. That's where a guide comes in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy you didn't catch any cuttlefish today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's the so many down there at the moment. I'm amazed you didn't catch cuttlefish. Yeah. Something a bit different about today's tide. It's quite often the way, little tiny differences. Mm -hmm. And you get sensitive to it when you're out there every day. Well, there you go. That's, that's exactly what we're talking about. You sort of picked up on that. Whereas for me and Andy, we just go when it's normal. That's every day because it's our only experience of what's going on at the moment. There's um, always a change happening. And part of the way of staying on top of the fish is to... Go, change with them. Yeah, with yeah, them. yeah, yeah. It's no good changing two weeks later. It's two weeks of not catching. No, no. The only thing that I noticed was the wind. It was really weird. Really so weird. The wind off. The wind was coming up predominantly off the land. Then it was shifting, wasn't it? And oh. as soon as it shifted and came down the channel, it had that lovely cool, cool yeah. water vapor feel. And it was like oh. And then when it went back round off the land yeah. again, it was like oh, being in your car when you first get in on a hot day and turn the fan on. Yeah, yeah. It was like yeah. oh, hope the wind changes again. <laughs> but but yeah, you were like. All these different uh, drifts you put us on. I was thinking, I don't know how you do it with the, knowing where the tide's running, but the wind was so variable. It's actually innate now. Yeah. I mean, innate, you know, learned, obviously, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's automatic now. I can understand with that, yeah. Wind, tide, bang, bang. And then the wind changes and we move straight away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what's the point of not doing it right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you pay, you say not a lot of money, it's enough money that you demand the best. Yeah. Yeah. But, you are very precise, which is really, really um, and noticeable and appreciated. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, where do you see your guiding being in five, ten years' time? Still doing it? Bermuda. Bermuda. Yeah. No, uh, as, seriously, the, it, it, well, it's, it's opened my eyes to the potential for huge, like a very good business in, yeah. in a country that um, you can guarantee being out. Yeah. Um, the way I market the blog mm -hmm. works really well. Um, which we will link for anyone who wants to see it. We'll link that below so you can go and have a little peruse for the back catalogue. It, it, it keeps my customers that I've had for a lot of years now. Yeah. I mean, I was sure about him from 2005, what we now, 22? Christ, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of years. Yeah. Um, and they're all still there. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing yeah. and flattering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, through the writings, a lot of them, just through the writings, a lot mm -hmm. of them. A lot of them have got old and can't fish anymore and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a lot of the kids have now got families, which is scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was guiding a uh, squid on the beach last October, and this young man and these young kids, and he told me when he was a kid, he'd found, do you remember that big bass I caught? Yeah, yeah. 2011? Yeah. He found it dead the next day. Oh. It didn't release. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which made me sad, but at the same time, I was just blown away that he was a 12-year-old kid back then. That's strange. And now he... And yeah. then time, and it really moves, and it's like if everything's interlinked, doesn't it? It just seems like one big long fishing trip to me. I know. Yeah, well, it has been. Yeah, it, Come it, back, yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially since I gave up women and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you still see yourself doing it as long as you can do? Ah, oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, then is the time for me to reevaluate. Re no, enjoy the time to reflect and write everything that yeah. I, is in my head, and try and get it into print. 
Yeah. That's the problem. A lot of it is innate, and I can't even work out yeah. myself how it happens half the time. Yeah. But it well, it, it, we said exactly this today that it's, it's all well and good, and Rob will try to. to but what we're not going to do today is we're not going to give away any of the Rob's secrets because you've got to pay the premium. <laughs> we've paid the premium, we've picked up the secrets. If you want to do it, you've got to come and see Rob. It's but, as simple as that, though. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Once you're paid, you're in. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Rob, will, Rob will tell you how to do. No a vetting system. Te- <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyone's, anyone's allowed. Um, Rob will, will show you and tell you how to do a particular technique, but what he can't tell you is things he doesn't realise he's doing. And what I find myself doing a lot is actually not fishing and watching Rob, and you pick things, little things up. Um, again, I'm not going to go into techniques, but I picked up a couple of things just watching Rob today that he's never told me, and I, and I he watched him do it, and I've caught him do it twice, three times. I thought, ah, oh, there must be a reason. I'm not sure why he's doing it, but I picked it up and I started doing it as well. And I, it's so very... I know what it was, and I'll tell you why now. Go on. Ah. Uh, do you want to tell me why in front of the camera? No, I'll just tell you why. Right. I, I was looking for a cod at the end of each. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did a little extra. Yeah. Isn't that but funny? there's not enough around to get you all doing it. Yeah. It, it was yeah. a waste of time, as yeah. it turned out. Isn't that funny that you say that? Because I think, did Robin catch the first two bass? Yes. And I, So I didn't tell you this, but I'm going, mm. <laughs> 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 that ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> so then I'm thinking, my retrieve's not right. Yeah. So I kept looking yeah. at what the maestro was doing. Yeah. 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 And I was trying to work out speed of retrieve and all sorts. Yeah. And I'm just looking going, okay. Because... I'm cause I, varying, in, especially on the first couple of drifts. I, I need to know what they're after. So know, it's hard to... I do a standard... Do I don't this. do this. So I'm very... Yeah, of course. Different. Yeah, yeah, we're, of course. So we're we're doing, going back to this. When we are in the surface, yeah. I was fishing like a pike. Yeah. Wasn't I? But they was off. chasing and they was, yeah. I was really yeah. intrigued yeah. by yeah. that. It's but, not how I would But I couldn't get it working because I couldn't get them up high enough. Yeah, so I had to do... Yeah. But we'll it, get you a stool next time. <laughs> yeah. Myself and Andy both need platform shoes. Just the platform shoes would yeah. be great. We'll yeah. come down in October with Bay City ah. roller shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, it was interesting that you said that, Charlie, because yeah. uh, I'm, I'm too competitive by half and I'm just looking across going. I love it. I love it. I yeah. wouldn't love it if there was more people on my boat. Yeah. I like the pair of you come yeah. as a pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I really like yeah. to see the skills on the boat. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. And, we, and the nice thing is as well, because myself and Robin especially and, and more and more so Andy and Robin with a report so we start bouncing our ideas off each other like, mm. again we're not going to go into them in two details but we've too many greater details but we've, we've discussed some things today which are potentially very exciting for the future of you and your business and, and could really change things and this is what you get when you start um, guiding clients who have come from different angles of fishing they give you a different point of view like, oh it's a two way street that yeah. I, uh, this, I wouldn't be in this house if it wasn't for a client yeah. that bailed me out financially yeah. at one point yeah um, it's a very much too. I get gifts all the time. Yeah. People go tra- traveling. Yeah, yeah. You know, gift from a client. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful thing when you get that appreciated. It's yeah. nice. I bet nurses really rock on that. Yeah. But I bet I get more money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know what he's on about. Then I'm thinking, where's he going with the nurses? I'm thinking, I hope he doesn't say what he said earlier. All nurses should, <laughs> all nurses should be fishing guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd like to see more nurses. <laughs> so if if you ever do have the pleasure to come to come out with Robin, you'll pick up very quickly. He doesn't sit still for very long. He's always got something going on. Um, so and, and he's got places to be today. So I, I've actually there. about to disappoint some people because oh, okay. the three o'clock is not sailing. With Fair the enough. Wind. Yeah. yeah, and that's the benefit of having someone so in touch. We can literally see where we were fishing today from Robin's front door. Um, so he's very finger on the pulse. Um, so it's another benefit of fishing with Robin. Um, but I'll take them on the wall. Yeah. Get them. Yeah, they've come all the way from London. So. Robin always always gives options. He's done that since day dot, I think. And um, oh no, hang on, you saw that wall, right? Yeah. It was full of people. Yeah, it was full of people. It looked very hot with yeah. the heat oh, radiating. Yeah, no, yeah. Maybe I'll take it to the pub. No, I think, yeah, I think you should go to the deal. wall and we'll come. We'll give us an hour. We'll come down for five minutes and just scrape us off. <laughs> Do a quick video and laugh, yeah. and, and leave you there in the puddle of sweat. And yeah. <clears throat> um, talking of puddle of sweat, we're all we're all getting that way. So I think we're going to try and wrap it up about now. Uh, going for about forty minutes. And um, what we're going to do before we do that, like I did say at the start of this, this is the penultimate episode of this series, episode twenty, which is the last one of this series. Will be on August August the twenty second at seven pm. And it'll be live, and we're going to be dragging in. Some past guests, um, I don't think we've released. Yeah, I have, yeah. Have we, have, we, have we released that information? I think I told them everyone last episode. So it's going to be, at the minute, it's Tom Hunt, DB, and Tom Moyer. Yeah. But things may change because yeah. people are busy. But yeah. the guys have kind of confirmed, but 
as I said, it's everyone's got busy lives. Yeah, yeah. life's life. Yeah, we mentioned it because Tom Moyer, we were we were going to sit in my ki- my lounge. Yeah. And we were going to be in the kitchen, but it was a bit rude, wasn't it? Yeah. To have him remote when he because he only lives just just down the road. Yeah. So, um, but so with that in mind, <laughs> yeah. jumping around, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can sit outside the front door. Yeah. Don't take his shit. We're going to do it on a this. Uh, you invite they have their own setup at home and then invite them onto the screen. Yeah, uh-huh. but so but he only lives down the road. So I thought it's a bit, a bit rude not to have him around. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but so with that in mind if you've got any questions for those guys that we can sort of take in advance and we can have prepped ready to go um, leave them in the comments below this also if you've had an experience with guides even with Rob himself um, as long as it's nice <laughs> no, no no really <laughs> yeah, yeah, if, you, if you've been with a guide and you've had a bad experience yeah. not name and shame but yeah, really yeah, tell yeah, people yeah, about yeah, it because yeah. It's like everything that's good and bad in everything. Absolutely. Um, yeah, let us know. We, we, we're always interested to read the comments. We actually read all the comments all the time. And it, we have conversations about them. In fact, I'm going to bring up very quickly that after the last episode where we talk about scents on lures, um, we sort of came to our own conclusion that perhaps scents on lures are not so much as an attraction to the fish, but to mask human scent, human oils and horribleness you have on your fingers. And me and Andy both received messages from viewers who said... You're spot on. Um, there's, you know, Striking, which is one of the lure, the lure brands that we spoke about in the podcast, actually say that on the back of the packaging, which I had in my hand and I chose not to read. Um, <laughs> or can't read. Or can't read, yeah. which is equally possible. So did they really message you and say, well, or did they just say, turn it over? Read the packet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we had, lots of, we had lots of messages off the back of the last podcast. We like it. We like the interaction. Um, but we are going to be after this next episode on a, on a break. Sabbatical. Yeah. Yeah, fishing sabbatical. Fishing sabbatical, and you'll be going back to doing his um, tales from the tackle shop with Alex, um, his match fishing stuff over the winter, and then we will be back in the spring. We don't know exactly when yet, um, but because we're very likely to forget in the live because there'll be lots of technical gremlins. <laughs> yeah. If you've got any ideas for episodes for the next season, guests, venues, anything like that, topics, let us know. Send us a message. Send us a message to our private social medias or on. The Little Fishing Podcast, Instagram or Facebook or wherever you can get a hold of us. Yeah, and also people would have noticed that we haven't pushed the social media side no. at all. And there's lots of reasons for that. One is time. Mm-hmm. And uh, two, really, we wanted to see if the podcast would grow off its own. Organically. Yeah, off just as a, like a search engine type yeah. thing on YouTube. Um, so don't worry because next April we'll really start going hard on the social media because we're going yeah. to flip it next year. We so we're totally going to... Take up all the space on the internet next year. Yep. To everywhere use... you look will be mine and Andy's face. Yeah, so <laughs> I apologise in advance for bombarding everybody. Before we finish, can I just say, it's been a pleasure to yeah. get to know you. Yeah. Uh, I'm liking you more and more, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I wasn't I'm sure not... at first. <laughs> <laughs> no, because no. to, to today, we've had a, it's been sweltering, but we, it's just... Did you notice no I was quite... shouted, did they? No, <laughs> once. I, I said to Charlie, as we were walking off going through town, that... It was just chilling. Yeah. I was so relaxed in the boat. And from last time, I knew that you were going to move the boat about a lot because you yeah. just wanted to put us on possibilities. So <laughs> some customers get a very different response because they get chilling, but then they stop doing it right. Yeah. And well, then just, I'm just, on them. They're just retrieving, aren't they? Yeah. No, but and we, it just, the, the whole morning developed into just immense amount of fun. Yeah. yeah. And we caught lots of fish and we had a lovely time. We, we, and, and it's nice because you can just talk about all sorts of different things that are not fishing related it just yeah. it, it, it either gels or it doesn't but it's been you know it's been a pleasure getting to know you and uh, you already we're looking we'll forward back, yeah i mean we we're going to come back with a bit cooler because uh, september for the cod squid october through december and big numbers yeah. of squidding yeah and, and bass all the way through yeah we can't take the bass after the 30th of november yeah finally get a break yeah. yeah. So we obviously we will link below all of Robin's details to his blog, to his socials, everywhere you can get in contact with him and book in a trip of your own. Um, I think that's it. Have I tied everything up? Got all the loose ends? I, I think know. so, but I haven't got a clue because my my my, my yeah. head is still so hot. Yeah. <laughs> total, <laughs> total mush inside here. Yeah, yeah. More than usual. No, you've been a superstar, <laughs> Charlie. Today, have per normal. Okay. Right. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Episode nineteen done. See you on the live.